The new Tensor G4 chipset within the Google Pixel 9 series of smartphones is misunderstood. I'm sure by now you've seen a lot of articles online saying that the Tensor G4 is disappointing in benchmarks. I mean, since the Tensor chipset was first announced, it got a lot of flack. Its performance was never good to begin with and everyone said that flagship phones should have flagship performance. Why I say that the Tensor G4 is misunderstood is because this chip is made with a very clear purpose and it does that very well. We've already talked about it in our full review of the Google Pixel 9, but here I want to expand on the topic of the particular chipset. So let's take a look at the spec sheets first. The Tensor G4 uses the same CPU core architectures compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Exynos 2400, but not so much when you compare it with the MediaTek Dimensity 9300 Plus. All these CPUs are made out of 8 cores, but their configurations are actually very different from each other. We can see two things from this table here. The Tensor G4 has the lowest clock speeds for all cores, and it also has 4 Cortex-A520 cores. While this sounds like mostly jargon, what Google is doing here is to focus on efficiency. Those Cortex-A520 cores are, and I quote from ARM's website, providing improved power efficiency and tuned to background and lightweight workloads for increased battery life. For all of the background processing that the Tensor G4 has to do, this is actually great. In our full review, we did find out that the battery life of the Pixel 9 with its rather small 4700mAh battery lasts over 15 hours in our standardized battery life test. The second point why I think the Tencent G4 is misunderstood is that this chipset is definitely not meant for gaming. Even though the CPU and GPUs found in the Tencent G4 is absolutely capable of cranking out high frame rates for many games, Google scaled down on two things. Number one is the thermal limit which is only at around 45 degrees Celsius from what I have tested and that is actually surprisingly low since other phones with the same size are at about 47 degrees Celsius. Lowering the thermal limit will directly affect the short-term performance burst like benchmark apps so that is why benchmark scores on this phone will look very low. But then again, if we look back at our gaming tests, there are certain games that just run a lot better than the others. While I can't confirm what's the cause, it's probably due to optimization issues. Games like Wuthering Waves work very well on this phone with advanced graphical preset, but for some reason, Genshin Impact struggles to even maintain a consistent frame rate at medium graphical preset. Some other games can run very well on the Tensor G4 too, and I'll have a link to our full gaming test video down in the description below so you can watch it after this video. So can you play games on the Google Pixel 9 with the Tensor G4 chipset? Well, it kind of depends on what games you're playing. But those who are buying the Pixel phones are mainly gonna be using it to take pictures and videos anyway. And that leads me to the next point, the amount of processing this chip has to do. For every picture we take, it has to do some sort of processing. For every screenshot we take, the pixel screenshot will do some processing as well. If we want to do some advanced photo editing like best take feature to select the best faces of everyone in that group picture, it also needs to do a lot of processing. Same goes to the add me feature as well. Even by just taking a digitally zoomed picture, the phone have to do a lot of processing to ensure the picture looks as good as it can be. Google made the Tensor G4 to perform its best in this scenario and it works really well in those cases. The best of all is that despite what those benchmark scores got, the Pixel 9 is still the smoothest Android phone that I have used to date. Yes, even smoother than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on any other phones that I've used so far. That's thanks to Google's software optimization and I'm just glad that Google continue to use their own custom designed Tensor chips for their own phones. The Tensor G4 is made with a purpose and it does that purpose very well. Many other chipsets are trying to be like the jack of all trades but it ended up being a master of none because it overheats and it also has bad efficiency. But at least the benchmark scores look great, right? Mm. And that is why I rarely use benchmark apps. Those scores don't really tell you the full story and it's oftentimes misleading. 
I've talked about this in our thermal throttling video, so you can click at the top right corner there to watch that video as well. And that's all that we have to share with you in today's video. I know it's a short one, but I really think a lot of people need to stop judging a chipset by just looking at the benchmark scores. If you like this kind of video, then hit that like button and remember to subscribe as they'll help us out a lot. And hey, do hit us up on social media as well with the links down in the description below. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. I really like this phone by the way.